Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Our Magic. It is continuing the Pioneer Series, Sleeper Series, Trudges Forward. Jake, are you ready to discuss the next set? We are at the final five sets. I am more than ready, but before we can talk about it, we need you to go below, click like, click subscribe. If you're not logged in, log in, click like, click subscribe. It really helps the channel. Absolutely, it does. Let's toss it to the cards. Jake, what set are we looking at here? We are going over Guilds of Ravnica. Yep, and the caveat to this entire Sleeper series, as we've said, these are the under $5 cards. We are shooting for the Sleepers. We are not shooting for all of the lands and all of the cards that are already $20 plus. We are shooting for the cards that we think have the potential to get above $5 that are currently under $5. And Jake, that starts with Legion Warboss in my mind. Yes, it starts with Legion Warboss. Remember, uh, we're still in the beginning of Pioneer's, uh, Pioneer's uh, debut in the Magic Multiverse. Yep. And so it's important to keep track, uh, you know, of the bans that are happening every Monday. And as cards get banned, the meta is constantly evolving. And we think that Legion War Boss is one of the cards that could affect the meta moving forward. That's absolutely right. There hasn't been an aggro deck or even any mid-range decks built since this card was printed that don't include this card in multiple copies. It's fantastic. It goes wide. It's a card that you've got to check as soon as it comes onto the battlefield or it's sure. going to get out of hand really quickly. Yeah, what I love about it is, you know, the Mentor is great, but it's like you said, it's the go wide. It's the fact that once you've played this card, it's automatically making more goblins. It's it's something that's very notable. And yes, it's a lightning rod. You must answer it or else, you know, you could just have it sit there and constantly make goblins. That's absolutely right. Talk about another card that has popped up in every deck that runs the colors. Runaway Steamkin. This thing is a house. It turns into a mana output. It gets bigger. It's only two mana. Uh, I love this card. Yeah, I do too. And the reason it's on this list is because it's hovering around like two or three bucks. And um, I'm sure that at this point, you know, we are into a few weeks of Pioneer being on everybody's radar. So I'm sure that initial copies of this were bought out. When this card originally rotated, it was like, okay, you know, it, it didn't really have a big place in Modern. And so it was a, it's a, a recent set. So a bunch of the set has been opened. And so this card just kind of dropped in price. But I believe that in Pioneer, there is a home for Runaway Steamkin. This card is excellent. This is also a card, I believe, that received a printing in one of those challenger decks if i'm calling yes those the correct that thing. is that is notable yes right. and so that i believe is one of the reasons that this card's price has gone down also in standard recently uh aggro decks really don't have a place in the meta um and so runaway steam can might have gone down because of that here's a legendary creature lazav the multifarious Oh yeah, that is that is notable what you just said. I, I said that it rotated. It didn't rotate out of standard. It's still in standard. <laughs> right. It has just fallen out of the limelight. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Let's uh, have the multifarious. How about a two mana legendary creature that can become anything that's in your graveyard? Yeah. Uh, it's it's on this list because it's a one three for two. Its abilities are just absolutely nuts. It's a card that had a lot of hype when it originally came out, but yep. it never really found a home. So this is one of those cards that I believe as as Pioneer moves forward and as we get, you know, we're moving into, you know, Zendikar and big creatures, like crazy creatures. We've so, also got the, the the layer of the Krakens or whatever the hell that set's called coming up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is one of those cards that's like a fine wine. It may not have a, uh, a, a deck that it's in right now, but moving forward, as more cards are printed, I wouldn't be surprised if someone's deck pops up and they're like, Lazav, wow. It yeah. was so obvious. Yeah. How did we miss it? It's a $2 Mythic. And Mythic is important too because Mythic is a smaller pool of cards. Yep. So when you have a Mythic that's like two bucks, it's like... Maybe. Maybe so. Yeah, maybe, maybe it gets there. Thief of Sanity is up next. Here's a 2-2 flyer for three. This card is so good. And Jake, I think the thing that always keeps it out of decks is that two buck. Yeah, I completely agree with you. But it's an effect that people love to run. Anything that mills cards off the top of their library oh, yeah, and absolutely. get to cast them for card advantage it's just like 
you know, I, I know that you play a lot of standards, so I'm sure you've dealt with this card a lot, but it is um, subjective to pretty much any single burn spell that's good or even right. possibly imaginable. So it, it does die to a lot, but its ability is very, very good. Every deck that has red in it right now is running multiple copies of Wild Slash, multiple copies sometimes of Shock, Sure. Um, you know, you'll never be able to convince me that Wild Slash is definitely a great card. But yeah. It's a shock. Me neither, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shock with extra text, and so everybody's running it if you've got the colors. And the thing is, is that Thief of Sanity dies so easily. And I believe, like I said, I think that's just the only thing that's kept it out of out of play all the time. Because if it doesn't get answered, it's awesome. It's just so easy to kill. Well, what I like about the card is, uh, and I would run it in like a salt type build, so I can run something that gives it hexproof or indestructible, sure. like a blossoming defense or something like that to right. get it out of range. So I would play it on turn four or on turn three with a mana up, uh, seeing if I like ramped into it. And I think I I really do believe that this is one of those cards that you know you pair it with Ashiok and and other type effects, Night Veil vale Spectre, and now all of a sudden you have a deck that's wide with a whole bunch of really oppressive monsters that that mill the top of your opponent's deck and then cast things. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. After that expansion explosion, this is the finisher card of a deck that creates a lot of mana. Uh, Wilderness Reclamation is a deck that I've seen this as the finisher for. Just, uh, you know, a lot of mana is it kind of decks that control the board, tempo you out, send stuff back, kill stuff outright, and then explosion for... You know, to I mean, for nine mana, it kills a five butt and draws you five cards. The other side of it, it can be used early to redirect a damage spell, not redirect, but grab a grab a removal spell, turn it back on your own stuff, copy a removal spell like a lava coil that you're already casting. It's I, I mean, and the card is cheap right now. I just think it's a fantastic card. Yeah, the big thing about this card is versatility. And if there's a different way to like work this into, you know, some sort of just guy control build, uh, I think I think a lot of the time with a, a new format, the hive mind kind of goes to, you know, what are what are people uh, what are people playing to success? Mm -hmm. And then as this format evolves, keep in mind this format seriously, it's in its infancy. It's right. barely a month old. So decks are going to fall out of the limelight. Some of the decks that are the top decks right now might not be the top decks in a couple months, and we might see something pop up that's absolutely absurd. And this card could be one of those cards. Like, yeah. these are just cards to have on your radar. Here's another card like that that, you know, gets double duty out of some dope instant or sorcery that's already been put into your graveyard. Yeah, this is a Snapcaster Mage without the without the butt to come with it. It's, yeah. uh, it's a really good card. It's one of those cards that was hyped when the set came out but it's just kind of like stagnated it's played a little bit in modern uh i'm sure it has a little bit of legacy usage and like some fringe kind of decks but it's one of those cards where yeah you want to get the the same bang out of out of a card that you've already played it's it helps with redundancy that surveil is really potent when you're trying to get going with graveyard strategies so yes it's a really good card it's really cheap that's that is the general I mean, that's thought it. and theme yeah. of this entire <laughs> entire series. Midnight Reaper. Here's what another a good card. card. Like another Runaway good card. Steamkin, I'm telling you, any deck that runs the color lately, uh, standard of course, is running this card in it for card advantage. I mean, it's a three two for three. That at the like the floor of this card is it replaces itself. Yes, at the cost of one damage and and yeah, one that's damage it. you draw a card. So. Uh, yeah, it's very subjective to Wild Slash, Shock, any kind of sure, removal. But yes, sure. the fact that it cantrips, the fact that it keeps your hand full, keeps it, it, and the upside of it is just absolutely bananas, bonkers, like right. In the red sacrifice deck, you play this and you can immediately start getting huge value out of it. It's got a relevant creature type with zombie, and it's it's low cost. You know, I mean, what else? What else can you say? Yeah, you know, if you have to use it as a blocker and you kill whatever it's blocking and then you're drawing a card, you've already got upside out of it. I would say once it's drawn a card and survived, then you've already gotten just right the most value that, that you could possibly ask for out of the card. That's absolutely right. Moving on to a board wipe, Ritual of Soot. Huge standard play. Comes out of the sideboard for a lot of, for a lot of decks, but killing everything three or less, that's huge. 
Yeah, in Pioneer, you know, you have to keep in mind, this is a, a format that's going to be pretty quick. Um, and so those aggro decks that are going to really succeed are probably all going to be under um, three mana. Yeah. So where stuff like, uh, I don't know, the, the Gruul decks that have the bigger butts are going to be out of range of, let's say, Witch's Vengeance. Sure. Ritual of Soot for just one mana more. It, it really does make sense just to have that additional coverage that gets around, you know, hexproof, and it just it's it's a strong card. It had a big impact in standard. I won't be surprised if it has an impact in pioneer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, relevant decks that it hits well are the uh, boggles style deck that has been bouncing around. Oh yeah, because um, there's no totem armor in there, so you exactly. Can't... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the uh, hardened scales deck. Once you kill their first hanger back walker, this wipes all those one ones off the battlefield along with whatever else they've played since then. And and yeah, so I mean, it, it I th really think that it could have some relevancy. That brings us back around to the beginning and to the end of this episode. We really appreciate you watching. If you wouldn't mind hitting like hitting subscribe really helps us out the rest of it you know it patreon we got a link down in the description below don't forget we're streaming twice a week over on twitch tuesday and thursday evenings jake i'm tapped out you got anything else i got all these foil witches ovens yeah you, you made me made me feel <laughs> excited about all my foil witches ovens wee, because wee. they're going nuts in standard anyway yeah catch you later catch you later don't forget to check out the other Pioneer Sleeper series for all the other formats and or all the other sets that are legal in Pioneer. Bye! Start at Return of Ravnica, go through the whole thing. Bye!